we keep hearing this was this is a politicized uh, issue. This is a manufactured culture war. I got to say, we aren't the ones who did that. We aren't the ones that came up with this radical new movement that is performing permanent physiological changes to children with no evidence of any benefits. We, we didn't start that. We're just trying to stop it because it's crazy. It's a contentious issue, which almost 70% of Americans oppose. So we are just saying here that taxpayer money shouldn't be used for it. That's all. This should not be that controversial of an issue. Um, questions are for Dr. McNamara. I, I just want to ask you, honestly, you're not concerned about the unknown effects of puberty blockers, hormones, and, and surgical interventions in kids, the long-term effects. Not concerned about that. Everything I've said here today comes from a place of deep honesty and conviction for the care that I provide and the community that I'm a part of. You've said that we've cherry-picked data. H how do you mean by what, how do you mean that? So it is very unscientific and flawed to pick a single study or a single statistic and to discuss it in isolation. Um, totally agree. Medical experts are able to talk about all of the evidence as a whole. Totally agree. So it's good to look at systematic reviews, right? That's the gold standard of evidence when you're trying to understand whether something works or whether it doesn't. So the British Journal of Medicine looked at 61 systematic reviews with the conclusion that, quote, there is great uncertainty about the effects of puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and surgeries in young people. Journal of Endocrine Society came up with the same conclusion, even the American Academy of Pediatrics. They all cite the lack of evidence. And so here's the thing. If you're doing a therapy and it's, you know, temporary, whatever, it, fine. Maybe let's try it. Let's see if it works. But when you're talking about permanent physiological changes, do you not agree, just from an ethical standpoint, that you might want extremely strong evidence of the benefits? And there is no systematic review that, that states that there is strong evidence of benefits. Sir, are you aware of how the quality evidence grading system works and how it's applied? Yeah. Yeah, we've read through it. That's why I'm citing these journals. So which journal says something different? I'm, I'm, we should have that debate. Tell me a journal that has done systematic reviews that cites different evidence, that cites strong evidence for benefits of these therapies. The standards of care were developed based on extensive... You're not telling me any journal. You're not telling me any study. Don't That's say standards not what of I'm, care. Yeah. So... Um, Tell me one. The standards of care. That's the, the standards of care. That's, yes, that's, standards that's of not care. a journal. That's not a study. That's not an organization. That's not an institution. You're just saying words. Name one study. Yeah. I'm out of time. I yield back. Yeah. I want to run everyone through this thought experiment. So, so you know, my daughter's going to grow up with a father with one eye. And at some point, she might say, you know, I want one eye. Right? I identify as somebody with one eyeball. Which, by the way, is far less important than your gender, just physiologically speaking. And so if I take her to the doctor and I say, can you just enucleate that eye for us? Because she identifies as a one eye. She wants to be just like her dad. What would the doctor say? They'd say, you're crazy and I'm going to have you arrested. That's what, that, well, that's what they should say. And this is, this is for a physiological intervention that is far less important than your actual gender and your reproductive organs. Like, we, we have to stop this madness. This has gone too far. You know, I asked before about, about <laughs> what evidence is there that there is benefit for these so-called standards of care. I mean, anyone can say that they have a standard of care, but it has to be based on some kind of evidence and, and research. And when you've done systematic reviews, which is, again, is the gold standard for how you come to a conclusion with, within the scientific community, you know, systematic reviews of 61 other systematic reviews, and you find little to no evidence that there's benefits for this, maybe you just press pause. Maybe you just press pause. Because if we're doing permanent physiological interventions to children that have per permanently disfiguring them for, for, for some hope of a benefit that, that is not conclusive, then maybe we should press pause. Like that's all we're saying. Press pause. And actually, that's, that actually is even less than that. All we're saying is let's not put taxpayer money toward it. Right? This is no different than how this Congress deals with the Hyde Amendment. This is a controversial issue. Abortion is a controversial issue. And so we say, look, we disagree on this, so let's make sure we don't put taxpayer funding toward it. That's all this bill is. Let's not put taxpayer funding towards something that is so obviously unproven and contentious. Actually, I don't even think it's, it's really not that contentious. 70% of Americans oppose it. So it's, it's actually the American people are pretty much on the side of not doing this or at least pressing the pause button. Um, Dr. Grossman, you're a child psychiatrist. 
can, can you expand upon the profound lack of clinical reviews and the long-term impacts of, of these treatments, puberty blockers, hormones, and surgeries? Well, yes, as I said, we don't have, we don't have the kind of studies that we would like. And I think it's very important for people to understand that when we talk about uh, standards of care and we talk about guidelines and all the various associations that have come out uh, for gender-affirming care and about politics and partisanshipness, those organizations themselves are, are rife with politics. They are permeated with politics. The Can you expand on that? Tell, tell us how those activists have pressured dissenting voices in this, in this well, yes, field. I just, I just interviewed a number of doctors for, for my book, uh, pediatricians, endocrinologists, who reported back to me on the fact that when they tried to speak up and, and have um, panel discussions or uh, presentations that challenged gender-affirming care, at the American Academy of Pediatrics or at the Endocrine Society, they're simply not given that opportunity. Even people, you know, who, who have written, uh, writing articles, the articles are turned down by a lot of journals. People have to understand that politics uh, has, has uh, medicine, unfortunately, is, is permeated with politics at this point. Now, ideally, we wouldn't be stepping in. Who, who wants the government stepping in? between doctors and parents and children. Of course, we ideally don't want that. But when there's something that is so wrong that's going on, then I think we have to. 